Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, first off, forgive me, I just finished uh, running a conference, uh, which I was particularly talkative in, so my throat is a little sore. Uh, but nevertheless, we, we proceed. Uh, so the topic for this week and on which I'll be presenting is uh, Canadian political culture and cleavages. I first want to frame this presentation according to a dynamic between, according to this dynamic between uh, inclusion and exclusion, uh, which I found to be a common theme throughout the readings. In addition, I also want to frame the pres presentation in relation to what I'm going to call a, the standard account of Canadian political culture, uh, which I see as built upon a seeming consensus of Canadian exceptionalism in its value for diversity and tradition of moderation and accommodation of this diversity. So somewhat predictably, I approach the readings for this week with a general question in mind of what is Canada's political culture. I also approach this week with a like I match most of you, a general idea of what I thought it to be uh, and what I think to be the standard or I might argue mythologized accounts of Canadian political culture, uh, that of diversity and commitment to the institutions of its accommodation. I came to uh, this conception of the standard account of Canadian political culture from a combination of remembering aspects of previous classes I've taken in Canadian politics, uh, living in Canada, and observing the way Canadians often talk about Canada. And then finally, also from themes uh, from this course thus far. First, I understand political culture generally simply as some level of consensus or a set of shared views, attitudes, and normative judgments held by a population regarding their shared social situation and political system and the appropriate behavior within it. Uh, based on this, it seems clear that a central component and animating principle of the standard account of Canadian political culture is difference in diversity. Uh, Canada is a country made up of diverse groups. What unites them is the seeming consensus and commitment to manage, accommodate, and value this diversity. It follows that also central to Canadian political culture is the institutions by which Canadian diversity has been ordered, such as the shared belief in parliamentary democracy, constitutionalism, and protection of minority rights through federalism, bilingualism, and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Uh, the standard account is particularly, or this conception of a standard account is particularly explicit in Russell's history of Canada as being the product of interaction and gradual accommodation of its three founding pillars of English Canada, uh, French Canada, and Indigenous Canada. It is also, uh, was also quite pre present uh, in last week's readings where moderation and pragmatism or outline as defining aspects of Canadian political ideology, uh, something Robert outlined in his presentation. I argue that, uh, however, I argue to varying degrees, all of the readings this week challenge or complicate the standard account of Canadian political culture. Indeed, of all the readings, the only one that you could say attempted to tackle the elusive concept of a Canadian political culture was Nelson Wiseman's aptly named book, In Search of a Canadian Political Culture, In Search of Canadian Political Culture. However, this is slightly misleading as rather early on, he disagrees with the very notion of a pan-Canadian political culture. Rather, Wiseman argues uh, that political culture within Canada is, is more accurately found regionally or provincially. Uh, thus, he stresses difference rather than commonality among regions. The chapters we read, however, uh, do not touch subs substantively on the specifics of Wiseman's regionally differentiated political cultures. Rather, in the first three chapters, Wiseman critically overviews the conventional approaches taken towards the study of Canadian political culture. In particular, 
He engages with individualist approaches, which examines the values and attitudes of individuals through the use of surveys uh, to come to an aggregate account of political culture. Uh, and, it's, and also institutional approaches, which seeks to understand Canada's political culture through its constitution and political and social institutions. An important feature to note of the study of Canadian political culture that comes out of Wiseman's overview is a notion of peculiarity or exceptionalism, a question specifically of why Canada is different than the United States and in what ways. All the approaches seem to either frame themselves in this distinction between Canada and the US or seek to directly answer this question. Uh, for me, this is directly related to the standard account previously mentioned uh, and in commonly held views that Canada's approach is to diversity is unique in its value of pluralism uh, being described as a mosaic compared to the US's assimilation in this melting pot. Uh, Cochrane and Perea further explore regional differences, build on Wiseman and further explore regional differences of Canada and the idea of regional rather than a pan-Canadian political culture. Uh, the method by which they do this is to analyze survey data and elucidate regional differences regarding a single issue. Specifically, people support uh, specifically, people support for government intervention in the economy. They then proceed to organize responses along traditional right-left, a traditional right-left ideological spectrum, and according to regions. Initially, there does appear to be discernible differences among the provinces. Findings which they observe reflect the stereotypical ideological map of Canada, where the West is more conservative and the East more liberal. However, as intersecting vari variables such as demographics, employment status, urban rural divide, uh, and language are incorporated, the picture becomes less clear. As such, a causal phenomenon of regionalism seems to be problematized or undermined insofar as individual variables account for much of the differences. Nevertheless, I think it's, it is pr particularly interesting and important in Cochrane and Perea's account that they acknowledge regionalism as something more than just an empirical pattern. They argue regionalism should be conceptualized not as empirically observed differences between people in different locales, but as a social psychological concept. In other words, uh, an identity held based on an attachment to people, institutions, and characteristics of a given geographic area. Uh, for proof of this, you simply need to examine the Zoom chat of our previous weeks to see the reactions and responses whenever something of prairie sig significance comes up. Uh, next, the Bouchard reading uh, switches the emphasis from understanding difference and diversity within Canada to ways in which it can be accommodated within the specific context of Quebec. Bouchard presents interculturalism as a foundational guiding principle which animates Quebec's political culture, much like multiculturalism does in the standard account of a Canadian political culture. Uh, interculturalism, as conceived and presented by Bouchard, recognizes the status of a cultural ma majority, in this case, uh, Quebecois, uh, its legitimacy and the right to preserve its tradition, values, and heritage while simultaneously respecting diversity and the rights of ethno-cultural minorities in the spirit of pluralism through development of a shared public and uh, civic culture. So uh, Bouchard argues and presents this kind of as a middle way between assimilationist and a pure multiculturalist stance. Uh, so for these first three readings, to a certain extent, I see that they all have in common this idea of inclusion and accommodation of diversity, uh, much like what I've ca called the standard account of Canadian political culture. Uh, federalism manages regional diversity and interculturalism intercultur manages diversity within Quebec. However, uh, in switching focus 
And to conclude this presentation, the last two readings issues this idea of inclusion for a shared common theme of exclusion and rejection of Canadian or of political culture, cultural consensus in Canada. Uh, firstly, Burroughs in discussing Indigenous people's relationship with the Canadian constitution articulates aspects of a different political culture. Indigenous peoples, despite making up a pillar of the standard account of Canadian political culture as illustrated by Russell, uh, do not share or self-identify with this conception. Uh, instead, Burroughs presents an Indigenous political culture uh, of resistance and resurgence. And I want to pause here to, to acknowledge potentially essentializing Indigenous peoples as a single group, a single political culture, uh, something that Burroughs touches on too, but however, for, the, for brevity and context of this presentation, we will treat them as, as kind of a single group. So as I said, presents, Burroughs presents an Indigenous political culture of resistance and resurgence. Uh, resistance to being incorporated within Canada as another ethno-cultural minority and resurgence through efforts to preserve and revitalize Indigenous nationhood. Uh, the mechanism by which Burroughs shows this is through strategic engagement and rejection uh, by Indigenous peoples towards Canada's evolving constitution. Thus, you could argue if there is a shared political culture between Canada and Indigenous peoples, it could be some broad notion of constitutionalism. Uh, finally, Walcott uh, challenges the very normative basis of the standard account of Canadian political culture. He questions the continued usefulness of diversity as a conceptual political claim for change and inclusion. Uh, specifically, Walcott argues that diversity is a device of moderation, appeasement, and the status quo. He says diversity interrupts and delays more radical calls uh, for human transformation and a de true deco uh, decolonial future. Here, Walcott is talking about the preservation of a structure of whiteness, which is a set of logic, logics, ideas, and practices that work to reproduce white people as a superior, as superior to others, and therefore is benefiting from a society built to confer and confirm superiority. In this, in the Canadian context, diversity and multiculturalism contain embedded notions of hierarchy from which recognition flows. Further, recognition alone is not enough if society remains fundamentally unchanged and reproduces relations of domination. Therefore, value for diversity uh, as integral to Canadian political culture is merely rhetorical and not substantive. It elides continued hierarchy and exclusion. Another critical aspect of, of Walcott's, uh, the Walcott reading is that it further challenges this notion of collective political culture uh, within regions or, or the, uh, the Canada in general and further outlines the kind of intersectional uh, variables that could influence and complicate conceptions of political culture. So to finish, although not perfect, I hope my framing of this week's readings in relation to a, a standard account of Canadian political culture uh, and the dynamic of inclusion and exclusion uh, brought a useful perspective to by which to engage with them. Uh, and finally, I want to finish with a couple of questions. Uh, first, how substantive can political culture be? And is it even given some of the uh, com complexities in the readings, is it even analytically useful? Uh, second, where is most appropriate to look for uh, political culture? Should we look regionally, provincially, munis municipally, or given the non-territorial cleavages, uh, should we look completely elsewhere? Uh, I look forward to discussing this in class tomorrow and yeah, see y'all tomorrow.